and gentlemen, welcome back to Doctor Who Reviews. Also, Gary Tier has been announced. Oh my god. Are I... you okay? Yes, I'm I'm That's so okay. Well. I'm damn. <laughs> Never answer the question, are you okay? Because you might get hit in the face by a Buster Wolf. But uh Rock you. Yeah, this I screamed because this seemed absolutely impossible. And, and hey, Bridget's back in Guilty Gear, uh, and trans rights are being had. The fighting game, the fighting game community ate well this weekend, thanks to Eva. Yes. Tekken Eight was teased. Harada is a madman. <laughs> uh, Team Samurai Showdown announced for King of Fighters. And I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, Yuri and, and Kimberly are uh, revealed for Street Fighter Six. You want to talk about eating well? I gotta talk about this shit. So, uh, over on Netflix, they just dropped a little show called The Sandman. It's <laughs> an adaptation of Neil Gaiman's famous comic, and uh, episode three of The Sandman has Joanna Constantine. Played by Jenna Coleman. She absolutely Holy fucking shit. crushes it. Okay, if you have not seen the Sandman show, if you, you need to, I just want you. You know, Clara? Imagine Clara Oswin Oswald, but she exercises demons, says the word fuck, and makes out with women. Yeah. And what to think, glorious, when it was first announced, it's Constantine, Constantine, sorry, because. No, it's Constantine. Uh, I think Gaiman said it was it was a British about Constantine, wasn't it? They say Constantine. Oh no, like like a Y. No, you're right. You're right. Constantine, yeah. Rhymes with wine, which is what people are complaining about. It we're also doing, haha. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she absolutely crushes this role. And when it was oh. first announced that Constantine it was a woman, people were like, "Oh, that's not for the source material." And knowing the fact that Neil Gaiman has written this. <laughs> Yeah. He's produced this show. It's his work. There's so much already changed about the source material. That's why this isn't another American Gods, because he's actually got control of his own material, and it shows. Also, I just want to say that Neil knew what the fuck he was doing with the Doctor Who crossover, because at the end of the episode, uh, there's a character that accompanies uh, Morpheus in the comics called Matthew, and he's a raven. And a... Uh, and, uh, Constantine talks to the raven yeah. at the end of the episode and uh, then she leaves and the cliffhanger of the episode is the raven saying because the next issue is where Morpheus goes to hell where the raven's saying fuck it let's go to hell <laughs> what, I mean, so what you're saying is she like, literally faces the raven she literally faces the raven and then the raven says let's go to hell amazing is dark water. That had to be intentional. That had to be intentional. That had to be. It's. But yeah, it's, she's it's amazing. Better. She better get her own spin-off. Oh god. I think funny. given the, the response that her her um, performance has gotten, she will be getting her own spin-off. I know she's filming something else at the moment, so it might not be straight away. Oh, but you've got I to would, think I that's on the watch, in the cards. I would watch that in a heartbeat. She's like, she killed it. Holy shit! I think she's uh, the best part of the show. I, I I haven't seen past that episode. I don't I don't care. I got what I I got what I needed. I'm not gonna eat as I mean, good I, as I that know that she appears in sort of like cameo roles in other episodes, but episode three is her main appearance. Yeah. And it is glorious. It's so good. But uh, we got a, uh, another episode of TV to talk about. Yeah, none of this is to do with Doctor Who, so let's get on to that. And also, uh to discuss Doctor Who with me. I'm joined by my one co-host, because unfortunately Kachiri's got a bit of a situation at the moment. We send our uh, love and support out to him. He can't be with us. Uh, well, we, 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 we're, keeping, we're keeping the midnight oil burning, the two of us here. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he did pick this, so... Um, and who's here with you tonight? With me tonight, then, to my virtual left. He cannot escape wrong death. It's Freezing Inferno. I what? Well, we were talking about SNK and... Fatal Fury oh. and Garou. Okay. Also, I literally came up with that in the last five minutes while we were talking about Garou, so... Hey, there you go. So, end of time. 
yeah, this was a monumental episode. A um, tribute to the late, great Bernard Cribbins. And uh, luckily, uh, and very knock on wood, we haven't lost any other Doctor Who characters that we need to uh, pay tribute please, to. Please don't say that, because it will happen then. I, well, I said knock on wood, so... Yes, but the universe is cruel, and it will interpret that in a different way. But anyway... Yeah, knock on wood, that hasn't happened and won't happen. Yeah, well, yeah. And so you'll this, notice that I only knocked three times. Because this I don't this was a, a major, major uh, story. Two parts. Totally, the finale totally of David Tennant's that, run. Yeah. You totally missed that. What was that? I said I only knocked three times because I don't want to tempt fate. Oh, very good. <laughs> but yeah. And if you haven't seen a... this, that will make sense later on, folks. Believe me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well... If you haven't seen this, a lot of this isn't going to make sense because this is this is the finale to the Russell T Davies era, to the David Tennant era, as we know. So and it far. it really does frame itself as a huge finale. This is like the end, yeah, the end of time. It's like the end of the fucking show because the... notably Eccleston turning into Tennant wasn't really like, oh, this weird show is getting canceled and now this new show is coming. It's just like, I didn't know what the oh, well, I didn't know what the fuck. I was just like. Wait, okay, so the Doctor Who turned into the weird Barcelona guy? That, that's... It was never going to happen yeah. because Doctor Who was actually riding the crest of a wave at this point. But can you imagine if the show had been cancelled and this was the final two episodes? I, I shudder to imagine. I shudder to think as well. But um, it was broadcast over Christmas, uh, Christmas Day for part one, 2009. And then New Year's Day, 2010. First time they'd ever done that. Yep. And they really did build up to this. David Tennant was all over the schedules that Christmas. He was a guest on QI. He was the host of uh, a Doctor Who special of Never Mind the Buzzcocks, also uh, featuring the late Bernard Cribbins and Catherine Tate. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you telling me that they had an, an episode of Doctor Who on the way and they promoted it? I know. He was they also, actually said things about it? What a novel concept, eh? But um, he also no, 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 got to be... Um, lock it all in the vault and be like, no one must see the episode. It must, nothing must be known about Oh, it. no, no. They went all out to make sure that everybody watched this. And they did. I'm, I'm going ma to make a really fucking topical, like... May maybe this is a too soon joke, but... Uh, Chibnall's going to get inspired by Warner Brothers shit-canning Batgirl. It's not too it, soon. It, that, never release it. it can never be spoiled. That situation is so ridiculous, by the way. It absolutely. I don't know if the film would have been any good or not. I mean, we, we won't know, but I feel so sorry for the cast and crew. At least put it out if it's shit. It's shit a, imagine, imagine putting up that level of work into something and it just doesn't see the light of day, ever. I mean, okay, I mean look. Uh, uh, I mean, the Snyder Cut fucking came out. Two years of your life just for nothing. The Snyder Cut came out. Someone's going to get this shit out of there. Even if they have to, like, smuggle a thumb drive out of Warner Brothers, they'll get the fuck out of there. It's a shame. But, uh... Um... Yeah. Chibnall, spo spoiler bullshit aside, let's get to something that uh, Chibnall does feel fond of. Look, it's late 2009 when the show was good. I would say this is one of the peaks of the show so far in terms of, of viewer interest in terms of everybody watching it which is why they just flooded the air, airways of david tennant in the run-up to it yeah and that's the and that's what they're trying to recapture nowadays please remember please remember when show was good to their credit though they were also trying to give him a a, a good send-off and they did they were trying to make sure that he he would be I don't want to say rewarded because he's an actor, but you know what I mean. So, uh, should we get on into it? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of scenes in here because the whole thing is two hours and 15 minutes. And it's not like classic Doctor Who where we can just go, oh, and then they faff around for 10 minutes with a monster running down a corridor because the writer's got to eat. Most of this is like vital bullshit. Also, because this was aired over Christmas Day and New Year's, a lot of Christmas stuff in it. I know it's August, yes. Um, just go it's with okay. it, please. 
That's okay. Like last week, I watched a Quantum Leap Christmas story. By the way, please, uh, please read my uh, Quantum Leap words on season two. You, uh, you could actually Leap. have the main plot of the story and not set it in Christmas. I was also, also I, I do have to say the the Quantum Leap Christmas story is a. Uh, is oddly prescient because it's basically the same riff as a uh, Doctor Who's Christmas Carol, where it's like, "Oh my God, we've got to convince this rich capitalist not to be an asshole on Christmas. What do we do? It's like that book, A Christmas Carol." <gasps> hey, wait a minute. Same setup. Yeah. We start this... then with Bernard Cribbins in a church. Well, we start with. Timothy Dalton. Well, yeah, we, we start with a narrator play, uh, who's voiced by Timothy Dalton. And I'll, I'll just give the speech here because um, if you want to have a, a big speech sound chilling, get Timothy Dalton to say it because the man is just amazing. I mean, he's, yes. he was he was bonded to Shakespeare. What more could you, you could you ask for? Why? Oh, my God. That, that's still one of the coldest kills in Bond history. You could have had everything. Shout out, by the way, to Robert Darby as well as Sanchez, because he's a fantastic in that film. Yes, he is. Um, we were saying this last week, or were we saying it off? off I think we were mentioning it briefly, yeah. So we're doing it again, because Dalton said this. Oh, well, yeah. Well, he, but, he's uh, yeah. there. So it, it is said in the final days of planet Earth, everyone had bad dreams. To the west and the north of that world, the human race did gather in celebration of a pagan right to banish the cold and the dark. Each and every one of these people had dreamt of the terrible things to come, but they forgot because they must. They forgot their nightmares of war and fire and insanity. They forgot, except for one. And it cuts to Wilf, and you hear the Master laughing in his head. Ooh. And again, they didn't hide the fact the Master was back in this. Well, I mean, to be fair, they didn't do that in uh, 2017 either. He's all over the trailer for the, um, the next time at the end of the Waters of Mars. He was all over the publicity. They did not hide the fact that he was in this at all. What? They did hide the fact of who Timothy Dalton was playing. Oh, yeah. That's the big big reveal, which was, in fairness, quite shocking. You mean you can reveal some things as long as you have bigger things that you keep secret? I mean, that's that's kind of the 101 of writing, isn't it? (laughs) All that to a certain someone... I, I do love the shot of Wilf in the church where he's right behind the uh, memorial for fallen soldiers. It's, uh, it's a really poignant shot. It's good framing. It's, put, that, put that up there, Ray. Put that up there. Yeah. They know how to frame their shots at this time. They really do. And then an old lady in the, ch- in the church is ta- telling him the story about how back in the day on this site... Someone came in a blue box and defeated a demon. And oh, look, there's a blue box in the stained glass window. How cute. Oh, look at that. The doctor influenced history. Well, hey, where'd that lady go? She just disappears. The woman, and she is just called The Woman, uh, played by the great Claire Bloom. British actress who um, you may not know, but she's been a lot of different things. Anyway, we cut from the church to the Ood. The Ood are back again. Hey, it's Ood Sigma from Planet of the Ood. You know, the guy who turned a capitalist into a fucking Ood. And I know that you're fed up with David Tennant as a doctor. But Mm. Goofy Tennant is wonderful, and there's no better example of it than here. He comes out of the TARDIS wearing a Stetson hat and a Hawaiian lei. Keep in mind that this is right after the Waters of Mars, where it's like, Oh my god, I've gone too far! Hey kids, it's me, it's Doctor Who! Well, that was his way of sort of coming through it. His way of coping. uh, Which also, you know, Day of the Doctor slots in between that gap. Yes. Even though he doesn't remember it. He he mentions it here. He says, um, got married. That was a mistake. Good Queen Bess. Let me tell you, her name is no longer... Anyway, what do you want? You know what her nickname is, right? Yes, yes, I I get the joke. And we'll leave it there. Speaking of jokes, I lock the TARDIS like a car. I lock (laughs) it like a car. It's funny. Get it? But beep, he's beep. been running away from his fate because the last time he saw Ood Sigma, Ood Sigma said that his song would be ending. He's in no hurry for that. So he's been having adventures to take his mind to the fact that his uh, his time is fast running out. So then he goes to meet with the elders of the Ood and they uh, 
he joins the circle to see their visions, and it's visions of the master. But also, he sees Wilf, two uh, wealthy black people, and you see Saxon in jail. Two wealthy black people. <laughs> I mean, we don't know who they are yet in the story. That's what, you could have just said two wealthy people. I mean, am I wrong? No, that they are they are two wealthy people of colour, but <laughs> Anyway, yeah, and he sees Lucy Saxon. And the elder of the Ood, who is voiced by Brian Cox. And we we basically get, you know, the recap. In, in case you missed it, here's what happened with Lucy Saxon and the Master back in series three. She shot a man. <laughs> but the but the doctor doesn't um blame her for this he says that the master corrupted her um i reversed it so that everything that happened would not be uh never happened but then she remembered she shot him i had him in my arms i burnt his body the master is dead but then someone took his ring no oh. and at the time they joked that this was the hand of the rani <laughs> and they, they didn't really I mean it was literally the rani picked up the ring dumbass but on, I think it's on the DVD commentary. They'd say, oh, that's the hand of the Rani, and everyone chuckles. <laughs> but the idea see. of that scene was, was uh, included if they ever wanted to bring the Master back, which they do here. Yeah. To their credit, they it's actually so... pick up on the on the loose thread. <laughs> which, I mean, that's that's why it was there. They just left the little crumb there for some clever writer to pick it up after. And the important thing about the, um, the Ood prophecy is... It is returning, he is returning, and it is returning, and they are returning, but too late, too late, far too late. It's the end of time itself, and they get the red eyes, you know, like you would have had before. Also, their society has been vastly accelerated, like way more than it should be. It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, but they, he says, you know, your city is too advanced. You're about to call me. None of this is right. So something is definitely out of whack. It's, this never really gets picked up on again. So. Doctor runs off. Uh, the elders like events that are hap that have happened are happening right now, and then we cut to Lucy Saxon. And the cult of the master were oh, ready boy. to revive him with the dark alchemy or whatever. Yeah, the, the prison staff have basically killed the old prison staff and taken over, save one. Um, they're a cult that, that worship um, Harold Saxon. So the uh, her her right hand woman, Mr. Fusis, is the one that got the ring. Mr. Fusis doesn't get any dialogue, by the way. No, she's just evil. I don't even know if she's actually created in the at the end of the episode. The governor they is. Throw a bunch. Of, they throw a bunch of shit into a cauldron. They get Lucy's lipstick because she has the biometric. She bore his imprint. Yeah. The master. And and they throw it in a pot and boom, magic light. It starts to suck their energy away. Here's Johnny Sim. There he is. Ah, oh, we give our energy to our master. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, and he, and he's coming back, never dying, never dying, never dying. Ah, <laughs> but Lucy Saxon's like, ah, but I had a contingency plan. If you came back. This potion's a life potion, but I had a well. I have the anti-life potion. Yeah, she gets a great send-off line here. Oh yeah, go up. Till death do us part, Harry. No. And sadly, she in, she dies in the, the explosion. Fucking prison explodes. Yeah, everyone dies in the explosion except, of course, for the master. Yes, which the rich, the two rich people, see. You can call them black. It's fine. I mean, the, I'm messing it's with not you. Not a pejorative; it's a descriptive. No, I know I'm messing with you. <laughs> but yeah, they see like a thing go by the security for Ja. He's still out there. We have to prepare the gate. Christmas is cancelled. Prepare the gate. And then we get um, a bunch of old people. Yeah, <laughs> Wilf and his uh, old squad. The Silver Cloak. Oh God. And so they're looking for the doctor. He gives them the description and all. They they treat it like a military operation because Wilf needs to be in the army. Yeah. The, which they mentioned back in his first appearance. It'll come up later. It certainly and, will. Uh, 
out in like a quarry somewhere, two homeless people are getting uh, some food from a food truck. Oh you know, God! So and stuff. <laughs> is it fair to say <laughs> that um, that John Sim chews the scenery in every chance he gets in this story? Even before that, even before that, though, I just wanted to mention, you know, the very of its time nature of this. Oh, Obama! He's gonna do a Christmas broadcast and end the recession. Yeah. Oh boy! Capitalism is saved. And they they always do. A, they they're very careful to not show Obama's face on camera. I don't know Obama. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and then, you know they're just they they get their they get their burger and they're just sitting by a fire and they're talking. You know. Oh yeah, Obama's gonna fix everything with a big plan. Well, it's not gonna help us any. But who's this renting homeless person next to them? Oh, it's the master. Oh, he, hey, you know, you kind of look like Harold Saxon. Hungry, <laughs> hungry, hungry. Um, so the master's dialogue, he gets a lot of dialogue in all his scenes. Some of it is cheesy. Some I of mean, it is way too over the top. This scene is definitely over the top. It is, I... but I also kind of love his performance here. Like he go, he goes full into it. So he's like rubbing the burger paper all over his face. And it's like, not enough, not enough. I'm gonna eat, neat, neat, neat. Want cheese, I'm chips, meat, gravy, cream, beer, pork, beef, fat. You remember, you, you remember Paradise Towers, the fucking thing in the basement that kept going. Oh, right. Yeah, that's John Sim in this. And you know, he's and so he starts turning, fading into a CG skeleton man and they're like oh my god let's get out of here and they run to the food truck and they're like help there's a crazy person that they leave up and the fucking food truck people are just skeletons in clothing and, still have all their clothes on. and then he jumps into the with the with the uh and then he does a superman jump and he's like dinner time dinner time and they scream so they've obviously been devoured and he jumps into the fucking kids then, oh, then the know. doctor shows up. Um, the oh, master yeah. bangs on a <laughs> bangs on an oil Hang drum. On. Oh, can I just say, I fucking love it when RTT, RTD goes full fucking Gonzo goofy. Like oh yeah. <laughs> give, give, hopefully, we get some more of that when, with his return. I think. He, I, well, given some of the onset reports, I think we will. Oh, are you talking about? Do I have to bleep it out again? No, because like... I... Yes, I do. <laughs> See, I was anticipating how to bleep it out, then you said nothing, and then you got me on the rebound. Well played. Eh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I hope we do get some of that gonzo, goofy stuff in the yeah. 60th. I mean, I'll, I'll be talking about the 60th in relation to this shit later. <laughs> But then the master does bang on an old drum uh, four times, because of course he does. Ah, uh, yeah. We, the, the prophecy from two episodes ago was, hey, hang on. Didn't we do, didn't we do this song? And we did the song and dance in the Chibbon Labor, too. It was a beware your enemies and their master or some shit. It's like, Whoop. Yeah, that's his <laughs> attempt to try and harness this, but it's not as good but as like, this. They don't, the, okay, we, the, the centenary hasn't aired yet, but like, fucking... There's no clever wordplay you can play with it. It doesn't seem there's any clever wordplay you can play with. Like, the whole he will knock four times has a great unexpected. Oh, God, the payoff to knock four times is fantastic. And heartbreaking, but it's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to say something that's going to sound harsh, so I apologize right now about Chibnall. It's going to sound harsh. Oh. Chris harsh Chibnall. against Chibnall? Chris, no. Chris Chibnall. Well, wait till I've said it. Chris Chibnall is someone who wants to emulate the golden years of RTD, but not putting any of the work of RTD. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that in the slightest. Like, or not as much work, our... anyway, because he, he has this, oh, beware the forces that mastigate you with their master. But that doesn't go anywhere. He didn't set that up. It's like, it's the skeleton of the structure that RTD used, but there's none of the like connecting tissue. There's no meat on the bones, which is ironic considering it, that, that that's Chibnall. It's that fucking dead food truck lady in the apron. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to suggest it was the master when he turns into an X-ray skeleton, but but 
also, yeah, yeah the monster keeps turning into an X-ray skeleton. What's up with that? <laughs> so, I mean, we're prejudging here, but come on, it's the Chibnall era. He's not going to magically go, like, in 90 minutes go, oh, no, surprise, everything's retroactively good. There's also nothing no, to, to really take with that. It's just beware the master. The master is showing up. They're turning the master's back, guys, because the master's back. Yeah, I mean, which, that's what the prophecy sounded like before. It sounds, oh, uh, knock four times, you know, like, da, 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 da. oh, it's like the master. Okay, the master's going to be in the finale. And, and then the episode airs, and yeah, the master's back, but there's all this other shit happening. And then you get to the twist, which we'll get to again. If, if like, time had oh, just said, shit. beware the force of the There's actually an idea here. If, if time had just said, you know, beware the force of the mess against you, and they had, she hadn't said, and their master, but you just hear the four beats, that's better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's a hint. It's not. It's not saying. By the way, it's guys, the, the master's thing. back. It's the same thing. Hey, remember the specials? It's time to do that prophecy again. The master is going to kill you. Except he isn't. Except he isn't. But back to the doctor and the master. Then they confront each other for a second here in the quarry, and then Wilf and the old folks interrupt it, and the master gets away. The silver cloak, and one of the old folks is played by the late great Jim Whitfield. Another late grade, huh? That's yeah. She died a couple of years ago. Um, um, really good innings again. I got to her nineties and was still acting, but um, she um, she pinches the doctor on the bottom. <laughs> oh joy! Many the menace, uh, and though you know this is a little bit awkward, but uh, the doctor does get a good uh, line here. He's like, "Is that your hand?" <laughs> yeah, Almighty. Yeah, I mean. Uh, sexual assault, funny, right? To which, to no, which she I responds, mean. good boy. I know, but because she's an old person, uh, I don't know. I mean, By the way, the Silver Club do not play any real role in the rest of the story. That yeah. seems literally there to have Jim Whitfield pinch David Tennant on the bottom. Great, thanks. Moving on. <laughs> well, moving on uh, to a really poignant scene in a cafe. Yeah. This the is beautiful. Something's connect, still connecting Wilf and the Doctor, which is interesting. There's, we're gonna. I think I can make a mirror. Loop. That something's connecting these two. Together. You you can make a mirror loop out of anything, but please go ahead. <laughs> it's your wow. skill. Wait, what did you say? It's your skill. What's my skill? Making mirror loops have absolutely nothing. That's just like the time you said that a minute ago. That's a mirror. <laughs> you walked right into it. Holy crap, Lars. Remember that time? No. <laughs> you walked right into it. No, but this cafe seems good. Because, you know, we get the line that, well, it's so heartbreaking now that the doctor says, I'm going to die soon. Oh. He almost so looks like he's, when he's smuggling, he says, I'm going to die. But... And Wolf says, well, so am I. Don't you dare. I'll try not to. Yeah, and then he's told yeah. about this prophecy about he will not four times. And he says, well, I saw you, I thought you said your people could change your whole body. He's like, well, even if I change, it feels like dying. Some new man goes sauntering away and I'm dead. And just to make this even more heartbreaking, Donna turns up and he can't talk to her. Anyway, anyway, you know, this this is, it's funny to watch this now knowing what's going to happen in 2023. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh no, I'm going to regenerate, and me, this incarnation of the Doctor, will be gone forever! You, you know how um, the whole point of the 50th anniversary was um, Stephen Moffat bringing back the Time Lords and Gallifrey? Making it so yeah. the, Time Lord, the, the end of the Time War didn't happen? The 50th anniversary is going to be that the um, Donna's mind being wiped didn't happen, isn't it? Or she I gets mean, better. It's going to be right. I, will, I, will definitely that wrong. Have, I definitely have something to say when we get on that, when we get to Tenant's uh, regeneration. I think he's going to write that wrong. I really do. I, again, saving my wad for that. But okay. Yeah. We see Donna again outside. And, you know, it's sad. He can't go outside and talk to her. And he can't help her. Wolf begs him, but he's like, no, I can't do it. I can't figure out how to do it. If she remembers me even once, her mind will burn up. She will die. Put a pin in that. Put a pin in that, yeah. But, yeah, Will says that she's engaged and she and her fiancé are making the best of it. And the doctor has a little cry about, you know, I've done some terrible things, grunts. 
still traumatized about you know going too far in waters of mars i guess which boy that's an ethical discussion for a podcast isn't it oh god if we ever get to waters of mars that's gonna be a field day yeah, ah, oh, the ethics of fixed points. But this is a this is a wonderful, wonderful scene. It's just two old men in a cafe. Yeah, and, and it, it and works so well. Top. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna praise Murray Gold here. I mean, I mean, I you got the skill too. <laughs> so you're super high school mural the creator, and I'm super high school Murray Gold fanboy. Good to know. Did you just equate it to Danganronpa talents? Yes. Yes, I did. What a fight be over oh, it. Uh, this, is, this is true. I started fair. playing that game again to get the back roots and all the... Yeah, um, you've been playing V3 again, huh? That's still a phenomenally good game. It is. It was my game of the year for 2017. It was my game of the decade. It was my game of the year for 2017. I don't know if it was my game. Of the year. Well, it was mine. I don't remember. It, no other game I've played in that in that decade made me feel the way it did, so it was my number one. But um, oh, good criteria. Anyway, so uh, he doesn't say hello to Donna because it'll kill her. Then we get more uh, fantastic uh, Timothy oh. Dalton narration. Again, I can't do this justice, but I have to I have to just write, read this out verbatim. And so it came to pass that the players took their final places. Making ready of the events that were to come, the madman sat in his empire of dust and ashes, little knowing of the glory he would achieve, while his saviour, that's the doctor, but they show the characters they're talking about as, they, as he talks. It's done really well. While his saviour looked upon the wilderness in the hope of changing his inevitable fate, far away the idiots and fools dreamt of a shining new future. Two guesses for who that is. <laughs> <laughs> They Timothy literally like Dalton have a champagne toast in front of the gate. It's 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 the two rich people. Um, Timothy Dalton really said anti-capitalism. <laughs> yes, he did. A future now doomed to never happen. As Earth rolled onwards into night, the people of that world did sleep and shiver, somehow knowing that dawn would bring only one thing: the final day. And you actually see Timothy Dalton's face at this point when he says the final day. Hey, Rain. Yeah. Pull up the Majora's Mask image. Put up the Majora's Mask image. You know, dawn of the final day. Yeah, I could do that. Remember myself to do that, me. So, um, it's all set. All the pieces are in place. All the players are where they, they need to be. The final day. And the final day begins with a fight in a junkyard. Lasers! Okay, this oh. this this has to be mentioned. Power. So I'm not sure if Power. I'm not sure if giving the master uh, force lightning was the best decision here. There is a justification for it because the resurrection went wrong. He has been burning up his own life force to use as a weapon. That's why he's been eating people, literally eating them, to replenish his energy. Hungry. And so he, the Doctor is not trying to hurt him. He's just walking towards him. The Master tries to blast him with the lightning. Succeeds, doesn't kill him. Just has a lie down for a bit while they off with each other. And so the Doctor mentions the whole end of time thing. But all the Master is concerned about is the drums in his head. Because that's, that's the flourish that RTD added to He also has another crazy monologue about eat, eating roasted meat and cakes with red wine. Mm-hmm. And then he like does a bit of con, like Time Lord telepathic content, and the Doctor can hear it. He can hear the drums, and he is shot by the this because he and, always assumed and, and, it was just. Go ahead, sorry. The Master's vindicated. He's like, "It's real. I'm not crazy." <laughs> All these years, you thought I was mad. And then he force lightnings himself away, but just as the Doctor's about to catch up with him. A helicopter shows up, and uh, the rich guy's armed guards abduct the master and knock out the doctor. Oh no, it's the British SAS! Oh god. It's what they look like! They're just so armed guards. Christmas. And so now it's Christmas Day, and uh, Donna gives Wilf the rich guy's book, and his name is Joshua Naismith. Yeah, and his daughter Abigail. And he's like, why did you buy me this? And Donna's like, I saw it in the shop, and 
you know, I just had a feeling that you should get it, like an instinct sort of thing, you know? And it's like, oh, that's some uh, Dr. Donna clues coming for you. Yep. And then he sits down to watch the Queen's speech, but it's actually the woman. She appears on the television, but only he can see her. Everyone else could just see her, ma- her majesty on the television, God bless her. Um... Help from the future appears in the form of the woman. A hologram which only Will can see in here. I think that one's for you. <laughs> Who was that for? That was that was for Mike. That was another quantum leap. I, th- I thought it might be, yeah. Mike, that was for you. Mike, that was for you. Anyway, uh, what does this lady have to say? Basically that um, Will's an old soldier, so the Doctor will have to take arms, and it's your job to try and keep him safe. His life can still be safe as long as you don't, you don't tell him anything. Mm-hmm. What would she say? The, the war has won and passed you by. Yeah. Wow, that's... Again, it doesn't really... It doesn't really yeah. come into it. I, I guess the idea that he was fighting at the end, the tail end of the war, and therefore he never had to kill anybody. Yeah, which Wilf is like, I, I, I shouldn't be ashamed of that. No, he should not. But uh, after she vanishes, he goes up into his bedroom and he pulls out a box from under his bed and it's his old service revolver from World War II. And the doctor's outside. Yeah. So he goes he goes out and he's like, I, and the doctor's like, I can't find the master. I don't know what's going on. Well, do, do, is there anything up with Donna? Anything? Like anything at all? And he's like, well, she did buy that book. By Joshua Naismith. And then they're talking if Sylvia catches him. Oh god, this is a great little bit. So, yeah, he recognizes Naismith from the Ood's visions. Yeah. That's important. So, um, so that's the man. Um, I've got to go and find him. Uh, then Sylvia comes out and says, you can't be here. She'll see you. Get out of here. He's like, right, I'm leaving. I'm coming with you. No, you're not! <laughs> Yeah, and then and then when Atarus is gone, uh, so it's like, bring my air. phone back Come right back now, here. Doctor. Get back here. Come back. Mother, oh, are you shouting at thin air? Yes. <laughs> Possibly. And then we're in the TARDIS. Oh, yeah, Wolf, by the way, bigger on the inside. I thought it'd be cleaner. <laughs> but Joshua Naismith has the Master all tied up in his uh, mansion, and he's showing him the gate. Yeah. The the, the immortality gate, as, a, as he calls it. As a couple of the uh, techs head out, head downstairs to talk, and uh, they're actually uh, aliens in disguise. Yeah, they look and a bit like, similar to an alien we this? saw in um, Voyage of the Damned. And they're like, who the fuck is this thing? What the fuck is going on? I don't know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? Just an important visitor. They didn't, they didn't tell us, but maybe he's exactly what we need. We're hijacking this project. Maybe we can use him. Anyway, then John Sim eats a chicken very messily. <laughs> Just a whole chicken, like, oh my god. Can you imagine having to film this? Like, it's like, and action! The Cut! the scenes between Naismith and the Master, these are two really good actors playing off of each other. Oh yeah. Da- David Harewood and, um... It is David Harewood, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. David Harewood and John Sim. And they just play off each other terrifically, particularly when the Master is restrained inside the straitjacket. Yeah. Because this is like talking to him, and the master's got his look on his face saying, I am so going to kill you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so going to enjoy this. He also says, I like you. You taste great. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> or you God. taste great. It was going to eat him. But um... Also important is that uh, running the gate is this weird double booth thing that's like one side's locked and one side's uh, opened. Yeah. Again, put uh... a pin in that. But what is Naismith's goal here? Well, his goal is to is achieve immortality for his daughter. His it's daughter then gets the meaning of her own name wrong. She says, Abigail means bringer of joy. No, it means father's joy. Whoops. Well, either way. But, uh, yeah, so this gate thing can heal people, as he demonstrates by showing a lady who had been burned, but is healed. But if it's fully repaired, you can grant immortality. And Abigail will have immortality. <laughs> I want her to never die. My gift to her, she will be immortal. Hence, it's given title to the Immortality Gate. 
as, as evil immortal... plots go, it's it's pretty simple. In immortal capitalism, God help us. Yeah. In two years' time, the the um, dilapidated head of Elon Musk just lives in his glass jar. I still don't to pay the taxes. <laughs> I said Elon Musk, not Italian Elon Musk. God damn it. Whoops, my mistake. So the Doctor and Wolf uh, arrive, and they sneak in, and they find the uh, disguised lady. And, you know, it's the funny thing. Oh, you're wearing a shimmer. Yeah, don't call oh, security. I'll tell you where a shimmer. I'm sorry, what's a shimmer? And it's a disguise. And he just points to Sonic and evaporates the disguise and goes, shimmer. Oh, my David lord, Tennant she's a cactus. <laughs> we'll get to that, finally. <laughs> uh, but David... <laughs> he really likes saying the word shimmer, and you know, he just. I mean, it's a good shimmer. word to say, shimmer. Shimmer. Other, other, uh, all female wrestling uh, promotions are available. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that that joke flew right over my head, but you know. It's well, the joke kind of explains itself. There are. Anyway, the masters are a- activating this thing, and uh. They, well, the, they explain, you know, oh, the gate, that's just a medical device. It repairs things. Oh, don't be stupid. It doesn't repair one person at a time. It's planet-wide. It does what? It translates Uh-oh. the technical template above the, across the entire it's population. Time for some, it's time for some tenant running while Murray Gold booms in the distance. That's that. Well, while that happens, um, the Master has actually fixed the gate because uh, Nesmith says, don't think I'm a slave driver. We can continue working on Boxing Day, Mr. Saxon. He goes, my name is the master. Click, click, click. Uh, beautiful music starts playing. Uh, he's like really, really pleased with his work. Nesmith is so pleased with his work, he has him restrained again. Oh, but I fixed it. Well, I don't. I trust you, but as far as I could throw you. He's not and, an idiot. But, but, you know, he tried to subdue the man. An attempt was made. Also, but... um, the, do- the doctor of the master is skeletal. Oh, God. But, uh, oh, what yeah, are those male also, breasts or female breasts? It's time for Obama's big speech. Thank you for ignoring that, by the way. Yeah. What? Were you Were you doing the fucking Peterson thing? Yes. Yeah. Bit... What rules? Your sons are bitches. bitches. I can't do the voice, but it's it's wonderful. <laughs> Wait a second. Shouldn't it be who cancels whom? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only okay. way that I will I will, the I will best, The that. best tweet is uh, the one I linked to a while ago where it's like a lady in the current the frog puppet and it's going to play the same. Uh, not lady. Whoops. 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 Not instead, a lady. It's, but instead it's just like, what's, what's the line? You woke moralists. Yes. And it's, but we'll it's, it's, uh, it's not a lady. It's not a lady. Oh, I see. I, I'm forgetting. It's, it's okay. I'm, but I'm just saying. I don't I'm believe it's a lady. If it, if it is a lady, or if it's a lady, I apologize, but I, I'm pretty sure they don't. Okay, well, whatever you identify as, we respect that. You. That that did Brand make me fr- that people. did make me spit out my drink when I saw that. So thanks for that first. <laughs> we'll see who cancels. I should have got it from Ray Bro's projection, but I didn't. Right. Well, whoever you are, funny tweet. But uh, yeah. It's time for Obama's big speech to solve the recession. Oh boy, capitalism is saved. Did my phone just go off then? I think it did. Uh... Oh wait, but what's this? The master's free, and he's jumping into the middle of the gate. They they telegraph this beautifully because this is like him. Um, I've no doubt you've laid traps, explosives, a means of escape and murder. Everything you've done to get with check before anyone stands inside of it. And and this is where Justin's just like smile like you dumb bitch. I've got you exactly where I want you. <laughs> Oh yeah, he jumps in, everyone starts having a headache, and the doctor puts Wilf in the uh, booth to protect him, because it shields him. He, he runs in, and they're like, you know, shoot that man, no, 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 just don't let him in there, oh, well, that was never going to happen, yeah, and he just jumps in. And then it begins. Oh my god. Donna calls Wilf because her, her Sylvia and her fiancé are acting weird, everyone's acting weird, and uh, they start, their heads start fucking spinning like crazy. And, well, this is the big cliffhanger. What you can see on the Everyone screen. Everyone on Earth becomes the fucking master. This is just... What a fucking cliffhanger. Trust Russell T. Davis to come up with this idea. I love him for it. You know what else I love him for? They revealed this twist on BBC News 
and they revealed it in such a way that nobody saw it. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't a spoiler. They literally have him, uh, him being John Sim, on set saying, there's only the master race doctor. And because that was out of context, it didn't click. Yeah, that, that's a uh, oof line also. I mean, yes, it is. But also, what are you going to call them? Master clones? I suppose. If that's the only UFO, that's not too bad. But uh, yeah, that everyone on Earth is the master, we'll call it. It's such a brilliant idea for a cliffhanger. It's and so then, ridiculous. And then John Sim is sitting there on Obama's podium and he's like, oh, there goes the financial solution. Yeah. So, Capitalism is doomed. <laughs> financial solution, oh, deleted. <laughs> uh, and, and so everyone on Earth becomes the fucking master, except for Wilf, he's been protected. As Winston, and except for Donna also, who's uh, starting to remember all the weird alien shit and her head's starting to burn up, so there's another bad glitch. Yeah, so only Wilf, Donna, and the Doctor, and the two aliens are left that aren't the master. And then we get Dalton's narration. But and before we get to that, can we, can we just give um, a shout out to the MVP of this, of this episode, John Seb? What John he had Sid to do. And all those fucking goofy poses. Yeah, the work he had to do for, for all these scenes. Like, I don't know. They, they, they didn't put his face on actors. They just really put him in all those outfits. Yeah, it, like, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like... Um, don't like CGI. They literally put him in all the costumes. Put him there. Film him. He does his little bit. Next costume. Put him there. Film him. Does his bit. I think the bit... They literally this, have, like... The so zoom out. The scenes were, like... 20 to 30 John Sims. He changed outfits 30 times and did each of those He bits definitely did for the longer. presidential, uh, the White House scene. Oh my God. Because they showed, they showed him in, in um, behind the scenes footage doing it. I think possibly for the wide shot at the end where it's zooming out of planet Earth, uh, that was body doubles and, and uh, masks and CGI. Possibly. Yeah. Good but God, most of them nice. were all John Sim. Well, that's uh, that's practical. And um, also, shout out to the one one master who throws a hat, and the other ha master picks it up and puts it on his own head. <laughs> I, I I would love to think that's an ad lib, and that wasn't in the script. That's just an idea he had. You know, I'm going to throw his hat, and then my other self is going to pick it up. That would be funny. Yes, it was John Sim. Yes, it was. Yes. So as the, as the masters are all laughing hysterically at the Doctor, now it's time for Dalton narration because the it zooms out from planet Earth, and I'll do it again if you don't mind, one more time. Oh wow! Um, because after the, the, the master gives his his speech about there's no more human race, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Um, and he's done all got his laughing out of his system, and so it came to pass, says Dalton, on Christmas Day that the human race did cease to exist. And this is where it gets really nutty. We zoom away from planet Earth. But even then, the Master had no concept of his greater role in events, for this was much more than humanity's end. Sorry, far more than humanity's end. And this is where we now cut to David Dalton's face. This was the day, this day was the day upon the whole creation would change forever. This was the day the Time Lords returned. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is the thing they kept hidden. Thank God they did. Yep. Now, this is your twist. This is how you do a twist. What a twist. How do you follow up something momental like the master is every human being on planet Earth? Oh, just that the Time Lords are back. Dun, dun, dun. No and biggie. What will they bring? We'll find out in part two. Also, Toby Dalton spits an inordinate amount in this uh, in these two stories. Yeah. He just he, he just spits a hell of a lot, even during this little scene. Spitting venom, both metaphorically and literally. Very good. Very good. I like that. And so part two, where things go downhill. <laughs> you know, everyone on Earth is dead and turned into the fucking master, and the Time Lords are coming back. Well, that, well, now things are really going to get bad. I, I don't mean in terms of the plot. I mean, like, this is where, for me, it goes. it, it gets a bit weaker. <laughs> Uh, I, guess. I think part one is stronger uh, yeah. than part two, but um So we begin on Gallifrey in the middle of the last days of the time war, which 
it's wild that <coughs> we had day the doctor show the other side you know they they have a line where like when we've got the general and all in their council and it's like the high council are doing their bullshit but we have to fend for ourselves and hey and the time this is what they were doing yeah so they're meeting and they're saying that the doctor has the moment they're, he's gonna destroy the Daleks and the Time Lords alike so John Hurt's out there doing his thing and then the Lady of Jackson's like, yeah, hasn't the Time War gone on enough? Millions of people keep dying every second and they keep being revived, you know? Maybe we should just fade away. And Timothy Dalton gets up. Thank you for your opinion. And atomizes her with his gauntlet. I will not die! Is this the, is this the Hand of Omega? The Hand of Omega is a fucking coffin thing. Oh yeah, sorry, no. It's more like the Thanos glove, isn't it? The Infinity Gauntlet. The gaunt it's the Gauntlet of. Can we say who this is yet? Oh yeah, because because they they literally mentioned who he is. Lord President Rassilon. Yeah, Rassilon is back. They revi I guess they I guess the implication is they revived him to win the Time War, and now he's like, ah ha! I won't die again, fuckers. Which they do actually run with in the Gallifrey Time War Big Finish series that they resurrected um, Rassilon to to win the Time War. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And people got. Actually, lost their minds because it was a it was a younger, thirsty wrestler. Mike told me a thing about that, and uh, I was like, "The what? I'm I'm going to quote him directly from our DM." He said, "Please do." What did he say? He was listing all the wrestlers, and he said, "There's five doctors: Mentor Wrestlon, the Grayest Wrestlon, Timothy Dalton, Old Man Hellbent Wrestlon, and." The Gallifrey Time War one who runs a Trump-like campaign to get Romana arrested. Yeah. The what? Lots of, of, of things happen in the Gallifrey Time War series. Including a version of Romana that is completely wiped out of history. <laughs> well, they, they just have a new version of Romana for one whole uh, story. And then things happen so that version of Romana never existed. <laughs> the what? Yeah, the what? Put that in. Uh, yeah, I'll put that in. Why not? Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, but Romana getting turned into another reincarnation solely for an episode. That feels very timely. I'll give him that. But, you know, getting her arrested. What? Yeah. Anyway. It so kind there's of a um, is an uncomfortable... Of um, Uncomfortable echo of uh, of current politics, doesn't it? Well, I mean, hey, good science fiction should echo current politics. But not in the way that makes you feel uncomfortable like that. Well, I mean, look, look, I plugged it at the top of the show, but I've been going through Quantum Leap, and oh boy, you want uncomfortable resonance yeah. with politics? That's the show. So, so the point then is that um, Wrestler refuses to die here. He refuses to let the Time Lords die with him. And their uh, salvation hopefully. comes in the form of Earth. Two survivors beyond the final day. The Master, Badly, yeah. the Doctor, locked in their final confrontation, the Enmity of Ages. And the final confrontation involves the Doctor and Wolf being tied up as the Masters taunts them and the other Masters do their thing. But then, Wolf's phone rings. Yeah, I have some thoughts and on this like, whole Master Doctor. I, I love I love John Sims' reaction. like, wait a minute, who's calling? You? Oh, you know, it's probably just a... no. You don't understand. I am everyone on Earth, and I'm not calling you. So who the hell is calling you? Yeah. It was, and it's Donna. The one person like, didn't change. Yeah, because she's part Time Lord now. Which now, this raises an interesting question. I was talking about this with Pichiri in DM a while uh, the other day in our little chat, but uh, so Donna's part time, right? Yeah. Except the, the Time Lord part of her is locked away. In her Indeed. Bed, so you can't... Okay, and we know, and you. Can, I don't know if you can believe this. Do you mind things about uh, the uh, new characters in the twenty twenty three specials? If they have been revealed already, no. I'm talking about Yasmin Finney as Rose. Uh, that's been revealed, so that's absolutely fine. Donna's daughter, right? I don't consider that a spoiler, because that's kind of well known. 
And uh, so if Donna is a part Time Lord and she has a daughter... Is Rose. Yeah. Could be something going on there. But, you know, Kuchiri had this, has the theory that this is some sort of alternate universe shenanigans and it's not our Donna, which, on the one hand, I can see, considering if they don't have a good idea of how to not have Donna's melt. But on the other hand, for reasons I'll get into, I kind of like it to be the prime universe Donna. Yeah. And uh, speaking speak of the prime universe, is because there are on. so many masters now, there's like six billion masters. So six million masters. No, six billion masters on the planet Earth. I'm going to call the main master just Master Prime for the time being. <laughs> one shall stand, Doctor, and one shall fall. I totally set you up for that. I I, I, I do not apologize for that. Oh, but yeah, um, he's like taunting him, saying, I'm sick about the freak granddad. So they because converge of, yeah. on, um, yeah. on, a, on a road in Chiswick, and Donna starts to remember, and her head explodes, but not in, the, not in that way. No, it's a wave of like, Artron energy regeneration. Gold energy whatever. knocks all the masters down unconscious, and then she passes out. And the doctor oh, at this point is basically strapped with his mouth bound, but he's smiling and winking <laughs> at like, Will. Oh, did you really think I'd leave her without a defense mechanism? And then he has a heartfelt plea to the master, Master Prime. Here, we're gonna go with that. He's like, "Oh, come on, we could we could do so many great things together. You could see the universe instead of owning it. So please, you could be so much better than this." Yeah, you're a genius. You are stone cold and then, brilliant. And then we get the and then we get another lore dump, which is going to become important. How the uh, drums came into the master's head because as a child on Gallifrey, he stared into the untempered schism, and he got the drumming in his head, and it drove him mad and drove him to villainy. Ha 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 ha. Etc. Etc. But Rassilon's also thinking about it in the High Council chamber, and his a uh, prophecy maker. Taps her uh, finger on the the desk. visionary, da, 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 da. and he's like, four beats, a heartbeat of a time bomb." Which they did reveal in the trailer. E. For this, but then Master Prime realizes, "Hey, wait a minute! There's six billion of me now, and we can all hear the drums. If they're calling from the end of time, I can find the source." I, can, I, doctor, can I just go back to a, a little bit of a scene uh, with John Sim and David Tennant, which I love? Go ahead. I love the way that um, he delivers this line because uh, he's talking about um, he's talking about this uh, the Doctor's prophecy that he heard, and he just absolutely acts his, his socks off here. He says, "You know, the, the gate. You're still dying. This body's brought out of death. All it can do is die." Uh, but you said the end of time. It says. Uh, Something is returning, a prophecy, that's why I need your help. What if I'm part of it? Don't you see? The drumbeat is coming from so far away from the end of time itself. And now it's been amplified six billion times. Oh, don't you see? I can find its source. Oh, Doctor, that's what your prophecy was. Me! It's the way it says me. Yeah. And then he slaps the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> to the beat of Murray Gold's music. <laughs> and then... The master is revealed to be an idiot because um, he gets a guard to, to kill, to uh, aim his gun at uh, Wilfred. He says, you do anything, the old man dies. He says, six million pairs of eyes, you're still an idiot, aren't you? You're still bound as stupid, you can't see the obvious. That guard is one inch too tall. The guard hits the master with his rifle, but... And it's one of the Vindvachis. It's Rossiter. They're Rossiter and Adams. Uh, which, uh, I, I, this line made me perk up because it's like... It kind of made me mad because he, he pulls off the helmet and Wilf is like, "Oh my lord, that's oh my lord, that's a cactus. That's cacti. That's racist." Yeah, God bless the cactuses. That's cacti. That's racist. <laughs> Which, uh, hey, that's more fucking elegance and objection to a, a loaded term than the fucking aquatic Silurians get. That's literally all I fucking asked for in over 50 years, and you just give it to these green people. It's not that hard, no. Kibnall. 
It's not that hard, other Doctor Who writers. That's all you gotta do. And since it is his, you know, his final episode, so right, David Tennant gets a great line here. He's being pushed yeah. down the stairs. They can't get him out of the chair in time. So they're just wheeling him down as he's being bumped down the stairs. He goes, worst rescue ever. Hey, comic book guy. Hey, uh, comic book guy. Yeah, the, the masters corner them in the basement, but then they teleport out to, up to uh, the Vinvachi spaceship. And the doctor immediately, like, fucks with it to break the teleport link so the master can't trace him. And shuts the ship down so uh, they can't blow them out of the sky with missiles. Uh, you know, now they're stranded up in space. They're not going to get blown up, but they're stranded up in space. But Wilf is like, oh, you've got a plan, a clever thing to pull out your butt and save the day, right? No, I don't. Oh. Dang. Yeah. I never really pointed and, uh, to And then we get the wild guns are revealed, which is that Rassilon fucking created the drums. Yeah. And he built it, and he, he did it to uh, manifest a link between the master outside the time war and him inside the time war, which, hey, isn't that like how the doctor was saying, hey, Wilf, there's something connecting us. Yeah. That's a Doctor Who mirror alert. All right, but originally that's a Doctor Who mirror alert. Doctor Who Near alert. Doctor Who. Near alert. Feel better for that? Yes. Good. Yes, I do. I'm glad you feel better for that. But they also need something physical to truly manifest the link, and so Rassilon pulls a little diamond out of a staff, and he tosses it into the vortex. And yeah. so, and on the ship, David Tennant sees a shooting star come down to Earth, and this thing crashes right outside the Naismith mansion, and so the masters go to pick it up, and they're like, it's a diamond, sir. The most impossible diamond ever. A white point star. Ooh, what's that? We'll find out in a minute. But first, the old lady's up here. The lady, the woman, whatever you want to call her, is up in the ship with Wilf. How is she there? I don't know. And she reiterates that this is the Doctor's final battle. Yes, the true final battle. The final time that this incarnation of Doctor Who will ever have a challenge to face. Oh, wait. Pay no attention to that big finish behind the curtain. Or, or you know. The 50th anniversary. Even, or the I'm, not even anniversary. I'm not even subtweeting big finish there. I'm subtweeting Jodie Whittaker retro regenerating into him. If that indeed is what's going to happen. We don't know. Fucking happen. We don't know for sure. We probably do, but we don't know for sure. How can Chibnall resist that fucking cliffhanger? Honestly. The, you know, Jodie Whittaker. Oh, yeah, so goodbye. What? 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 So, Tell Barcelona, then. What? 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 You know, like David Tennant says. What? You Do you know. remember 2006 when David Tennant said, what, what, what? Yeah, when the show was good. <laughs> please remember. Please remember and watch show again. Please, I'm begging you. No innovation, only member. <laughs> For the love of God, turn off the Antiques Roadshow rerun and remember to It's, it's, it's that dog alive. babe, isn't it? <laughs> what? Please, member. No oh, bye, only member. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah. So the doctor has to stand arms now, even though, you know, oh, I don't like guns. And so we get this scene, which is, you know, a nice... Quiet scene yeah, more so now that we've lost Bernard Cribbins. Yeah. He asks if all the dead bodies on Earth changed into masters, and the doctor's like, yeah, probably. Sorry. And Wolf remembers uh, fighting World War II, because he's, he's up in the spaceship looking down at Europe, and he's like, oh, I was there in 1948 in Palestine. Yeah. He's writing about the war. <laughs> A blizzard of bullets. But it gets really so, interesting yeah. when after he says, you know, I'm older than you, I'm 906, I may not look it, but um, he then says, you know, the master's going to kill you, isn't he? Kill him first, and he hands him the revolver. Well, the, you're missing one line, which is good. 
oh, you're so old. We must look like insects to you. No, you look like giants. Yeah, that's a great line. And then, you know, it's like, oh, please, doctor, please take the gun and kill the master. Oh, no, no, I'm the man who never would. No, I could never take a gun. No, no. Yeah, what what happens if he dies? Do they all go back to being people? The master's going to kill you. Well, hang on, hang on. You you said the master's going to kill you, so kill him first. The, The doctor's like, ah, that's how the master got started, which... The ethics there, you know, the whole, you know, weird pacifism, probably problem bullshit. It, it happens in this show. But, yeah, the doctor's saying, I'm, oh, I'm not innocent. I've taken lives before. Even worse, I got clever enough to manipulate people into taking their own lives, which feels like a Journey's End slash Waters of Mars. Oh, too far. Sort of thing. Yeah, and then we get you know the trouble problem. Well, what happens if the master dies? Oh, they change back. Oh, well then you have to kill him. Don't you dare put the entire human race before him, or him before the entire. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even so, he refuses to take the gun. But then the master broadcasts that the diamond. Yeah, and don't don't answer that because he'll know exactly where we are. <laughs> also, Wilf. Um gets the line, don't die, you're the most wonderful man and I don't want you to die. And Bernard Cribbins actually socks off. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, the Master has finally made contact with the Time Lords. And he's like, ah, I found it. I got a white point star from Gallifrey. I'm going to use it as a focal point to bring back the Time Lords and then... And this, this is a touch that really makes you go, oh shit, shit's gone down. As soon as the doctor hears, I'm bringing back the Time Lords, he's Im- he immediately grabs the fucking gun. And rubs. Holy, like, that is a, like, ethics aside, that is a definite way of, ra- a nice way of raising the stakes. Where it's like, shit is fucked, it is bad, I need this. Yeah. How to show that the, 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 um, the stakes may have been higher without a word of dialogue, that. Yeah. And so the master does his thing, establishes the link, and uh, back on Gallifrey in the Time War, Dalton is addressing the Time Lords, and he's like, it's time to return to the waking world and complete the ultimate sanction. Who votes with me? Gallifrey rises! And they're all Gallifrey rises. More spit. Yeah. More spit, more radicalization of the war, Time Lords. And we'll get so, to the uh, the um, outcome of that vote in a minute because uh, that's which is but first, hey, y'all seen Star Wars? <laughs> we get a lengthy sequence here where they're trying to shoot down the missiles that the masters are, are sending up to blow them out of the sky. Yeah, they got the they, they, uh, the doctor got the ship working again, so they're going back down to Earth. But you know, as soon as they start it up, they get detected on the radar, and the master's like, "I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have a million time lords here in a second. I don't need the doctor. Blow them to hell." I'll have time lost to spare any second now. Which is a uh, fitting considering his ultimate plan. He's he's got control of NATO, the Chinese army, unit. the Pentagon <laughs> unit. You know, so shitload of missiles. He's uh, got it all basically. He's got Wilf and Ro- Robister, Robster, Rossiter. Him, they they get in turrets and they shoot down the yeah it's. It, you know, the scene in Star Wars where they get in the thing and shoot them. It absolutely is that. And they can't keep this forever. So um, the Doctor gets Adams, Captain Adams, to uh, make a beeline for the Naismith Mansion. Yeah. And uh, then we get the bit that you were talking about with the outcome of the vote. The... Near unanimous, except for two dissenters. Yeah. And Those this... who voted against the sanctions stand in shame like the weeping angels of old, which... Pe- people, people really that... latched onto this line that somehow the weeping angels were old time lords. Which... Um, no. Yeah. I mean, when you know that later in the future uh, weeping angels work for Division... Yeah, it, it might have some... Doesn't seem, doesn't seem as crazy now. No, but he says like the Weeping Angels of Old, not to become the Weeping Angels of Old. Yeah. But yeah, t- two of them refuse to vote to send Gallifrey back, so they've got to stand there with their hands over their faces in shame and witness the end of everything. And, and it's, 
and here they come back to the Naismith Mansion as uh, the ship flies overhead and Tennant opens the hatch and he jumps out, defenestrating himself through a fucking skylight and slamming on the floor, face cut with glass, and you can barely lift the fucking gun at Rassel before almost passing out. I think he does pass out, isn't he? Because it's wild. And here's the master's grand plan. He's like, ha ha, the Time Lords are here. I'm going to use the gate and all my six billion people and template myself onto you. All the Time Lords will become me. Ah ha ha. Wait, what are you doing with that gauntlet? Don't mess with Timothy Dalton. He just undo undoes the mas the uh, multiple masters thing in like an instant. And everyone turns back into themselves. The, the idea, his idea was to transplant himself into every single Time Lord. And the mass and Rassilon's um Jusets governor manages to stop this from happening. Mm-hmm. So he just reversed his you know that, that huge cliffhanger, oh my god, how are we gonna get out of this? Tim Don just snaps his fingers. And <laughs> Okay Okay, Thanos. It really is Thanos, and um they go through the head blur in reverse. Mm-hmm. By the way, the way they, they filmed that is uh, again the behind the scenes bit. There's a really uh, funny and again it's kinda of touching given that now Bernard Cribbins is no longer with us. Where he's like, there's a couple of the actors are doing the, the very slow head turn that will be then filmed and sped up to do the, you know, the spinning head. Mm-hmm. And he's in, and I think he gets one of the actors and says, you know, show, show me how to do a proper head turn, love. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the woman uh, that, um, that has her burns healed. Uh, and, the, and the one that plays Abigail can't do it, so, so she shows her how to do it. I'm not remembering that wrong. Worse surprisingly, as a uh, Gallifrey fucking appears in orbit above Earth. Yeah, don't you ever the listen. The whole ass planet. Something is returning. Not someone, something. It's Gallifrey right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Wait, sorry. <laughs> and so, Wilfa, Wilfa has convinced the Vinvachi to let him back to the house to save the Doctor and he comes in, into this chaos and there's a poor tech in the booth. And he goes and lets the tech out with the uh, double reverse switch thing. So that's nice of Wilf. Uh, but, you know, the doctor says to the master, you you fool, Gallifrey isn't just going to come back. Everything from the time was going to come through now. And, you know, he gets to trot out for one last time. That poignant little, says so much without saying much at all description of the horrors of the time war. Oh, God, yeah. You weren't there in the five days of the war. You never saw what was born. But if the Talos broken, everything's coming through. Not just the Daleks. The Scar of Degradations. The Hordes of Travesties. The Nightmare Child. The Could Have Been King of His Armies of Meanwhiles and Never Words. The War Turned Into Hell. And that's what you've opened. Hell is descending right above the Earth. And how many of these things have Big Finished explained in brushingly brushingly Just uh, the Nightmare Child, I think. Underwhelming detail. The Nightmare Child has been explained. I don't think the others have yet. I bet I bet it's crazy. Like you can't really depict the Gonzo time more. You don't need to. So, That's though, the point. Yeah. Though there is one well, there is one thing that's wild, but it's like there's a, a short trip where someone gets a time war gun and every and you you the ammunition for it is days of your history. Oh wow. So you delete the days of all your history to uh, fire the gun and try things and go back in time and try to fix things. That's a wild concept. Yeah, it's really good. It was a decent idea. And now we have the whole crux of the episode. Is the Doctor going to commit murder to save everyone? And they made a well, huge deal well, about this. Well, before that, we have Timothy Dalton's uh, grand scheme, which is that... Time itself is going to fucking end. All of creation is going to be destroyed and the Time Lords are going to ascend into creatures of pure thought. Like, fuck this. We're, if we got to lose the Time War, everything dies! They will become creatures of consciousness alone, free of bodies, time, cause and effect. So then, and, and now we get David Tennant. Oh no, is Doctor Who going to shoot a gun and kill a person? Before that, we also get the Master's hearts breaking because he's like, take me with you, Lord President. Let me ascend into glory. You are diseased. They caused this! No, he even says that. You are diseased. Of our own making, but no more. And he's about so. to kill the Master and then we hear a click. 
I'm going to shoot Rassilon. No, I'm going to shoot the Master. No, I'm going to shoot Rassilon. You, 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 you're skimming over this, but it's a really effective scene. Yeah. Because you're right, he's, he's, he appears to be aiming back and forth between Rassilon and the Master. You know, who's he going to shoot? Who's he going to kill? The final act of your life is murder, says Rassilon. But which one of us? And then five words, which are just so effective here. And then, Music's supposed to crescendo. Then Gun swings back and forth. And then, oh yeah, we, we forgot the important thing, didn't we? The woman. The woman. She's there. She's one of the two Time Lords that and didn't she, vote. And she looks at the doctor with a tear running down her cheek. And she's indicating back. something with her eyes. And so the doctor swivels on the master again. But this time... Get out of the way. Oh, he could just shoot the diamond. People got really upset about him. this, but come on. Did you really think they were going to have the doctor in his final story shoot a man in cold blood dead? Yeah. Come on. But yeah, he shoots the diamond... The uh, link is being broken. Rassilon's and he's like, back into the time war, Rassilon, back into hell. Oh yeah, well I'll still kill you. And then the master steps up from behind David Tennant. Get says, out of the way. And that's another mirror alert. Okay. Doctor Who mirror alert. Doctor Who mirror alert. You did this to me. All of my life, you made me! And he's blasting Timothy Dalton with his energy. And he's also getting stuck, and he's also moving into the uh, closing gap, so he's getting stuck back into the time war, which... By his own somehow choice. He get, I mean, somehow he'll, he'll get himself back into, like, stability. The Time Lords uh, will fix him and then kick him out. Despite the fact that he, he, he killed Rassilon. But, you know, he became... Presumably, David Sumter Rassilon. Yeah, uh, the music of this bit is the clouds pass, which we hear a little snippets of throughout part one, and it's like this joyful moment. The master has finally redeemed himself. He saved the doctor this one time. He's ended the time war on his own terms. He gets to, you know, I guess the implication is that he burned himself out, but of course he didn't. Because you see him like, as he's shouting one, two, three, four. He's going super glowy skull. Just super x-ray skeleton. And then he's so gone. They're all gone. He kills Rassilon. He gets kicked out. And he ends up on that Cyberman ship. Just in time to find Misty. And shoot himself and then, in the back. And then shoot himself in the back and presumably turn into Misty. And then do the dark water bullshit. Yeah. Tommy whiny. But the day saved. Gallifrey is it's gone. The master is gone. Everyone's human again. David Tennant is laying there in the Naismith mansion saying, Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm alive. I didn't die. The prophecy. I beat the prophecy. I... Yeah. This is just so cruel. It was Will in the booth. All along. And when I heard this, the first time I watched this, I thought, is this some sort of super reveal that Wilf was behind it the whole time? No. Wilf's innocent. He's stuck in the booth and it's about to be flooded in radi with radiation and the doctor can save him but then his chamber would be flooded with radiation so either Wilf dies or the doctor dies. Yeah, and the doctor this isn't like a, an immediate alright, I'm going to do it right now self-sacrifice, self must look at me. He fights with it in his head. The doctor is fucking... This is, you know... The wolf is like, it's... A, no, doctor, leave me. I'm an old man. Yeah, you're an old man. If fucking... You, 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 you're... You got no... You're just not important at all. But look at me! I'm the doctor! I could do all... I could do so much more! I could do so much more! It's not fair. Now... There's some... There's two ways you can take that line. In a with the news that he's coming back for 2023. You could take the cynical route of, I could do so much more, meaning, oh, guess what? You can do so much more, because you can come back, and it could be 2008 again forever, and nostalgia need never die. Oh, what's creativity? Who, who cares about creativity and innovation? David Tennant is Doctor Who forever! That sort of mentality. 
Or, like you were saying when we were talking about uh, Yasmin Finney, I could do so much more could be seen as a moral failing. That he hasn't done so much more. It goes he back to the title of Victorious, right. doesn't it? He's, yeah, yeah, that too. But he also, he hasn't tied up all the loose threads of this incarnation. And so well, Jodie Whittaker can't turn into Shooty Gatwa until David Tennant comes back and fixes the fucking mess. That might be a way a to go, go around it, yeah. It could be those, it could be something else, who knows. But the Doctor eventually you know, calms down from his little temper tantrum and says, okay, I would be honored to save you, Wilf. And he does it. Yeah, and this hurts. Yeah. He comes up in a boy, he's, he's like really in agony. And then he seems to be okay. Because he just gets up. And he just puts his hands in his face like, oh. And then all those glass cuts. Yeah, they just heal. It started. It started. And and so, but it started even though we're 55 minutes into this hour, 50 minute show. So how do we fill the time? Farewell tour. Self-indulgence. Farewell tour. I want to skim through this as much as possible. Yeah. But the doctor um, drops Whiff off and says, I'll see you one more time before I I go. And he leaves. Don is okay, by the way. He's off to get his reward. And his reward is, hey, kids, let's have one last goodbye to all the companions of the Russell T. Davies Sheeps. And we begin with a really bad decision on the part of Martha Jones. Oh God! So do you right. remember how when she left, she had a fiance or a or a partner that we met in uh, the, uh, the Last of the Time Lords? He died saving yeah. her, and then he was brought back to life, and so they they began a relationship. He's just been dropped like a hot potato because yeah, Martha is now going out with Mickey. Which not only you considering Noel Clark, but also RTD. Really, you had to. I, I, I don't know. In fairness, no Clark's um, potential transgressions were not known to a lot of people at this I time. I mean, yeah, but, but like... Yeah, know, and you... um, basically uh, he got her to quit unit and go freelance. And they're currently fighting a Santaran who the doctor bonks on the back of the neck. He's about to shoot out. one of them. Uh, he married Mickey Mary Martha, by the way. And they were going to show up as a couple in Torchwood. Mm. In the um, in the five-part Children of Earth storyline. Oh, boy. That but it fell through. I mean, if, if that had happened, would they have killed... I mean, spoilers for Children of Earth, I guess. Would they have killed Mickey? Because the character I think they introduced instead of Mickey dies. Although, well. Hmm. So... Would it have been very different? I don't know. But the Doctor saves them just as Centaurus is about to take a, a fatal shot on one of them. Uh, they see the Doctor. He uh, goes to the TARDIS. They hug as the TARDIS materializes. So that's the first part of the Farewell Tour. Then we've got uh, Luke. Luke Smith. Who the Doctor saves from getting hit by a car while on his cell phone. And he calls for his mom, Sarah Jane. And... They share a sad look at each other. And that's literally the last time we see them together. Well, death of the Doctor. No, I mean David Tennant and Elizabeth oh, Sladen. Tennant. Tennant and Sladen. Yes, yeah. but not the Tenth the Doctor, doctor. And, and Sarah Jane. Yeah. Uh, then we cut to a bar. And hey, remember what you were saying about allegations? <laughs> oh, God! And then we cut to a bar. <laughs> and then we cut away from the well, bar. Nothing, no, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens here. Let's move on. Oh, no. See, missing. No, no. Um, somebody who we're not gonna, we don't really want to glorify here. Um, I mentioned Torchwood. We can say the who the fuck it All is? All right, Captain Jack Hartness is drinking at a bar. Uh, the Doctor message sets him up on a date with uh, Alonzo Frame. Um, while that's just... one song from Daleks in Manhattan plays. And it's like a fucked up space bar with all the Doctor Who aliens in it, you know. But uh, then we, then the next place is not someone the Doctor's ever met, but sort of related. 
This is a deep Barry cut. Barry Newman's great granddaughter. Yeah, Joe Redfern's Joe Redfern's great granddaughter. Verity Newman is, is the woman. Verity Newman, oh yeah, Verity Newman is the woman. John Redford's granddaughter. Yeah, she's she's signing her, a copy of her book, which is basically the story of how uh, her mother met this um this man from the stars, and she wrote it all down. I've turned it into a book. Um, she signs it and says, uh, "Who's it for? The doctor. That's the name he used." Was she happy in the end? He asked her. Yes. Were you? And then we cut to Donna's wedding. Speaking of poignant, this makes me bore my eyes out. Yeah. What, the wedding or... The no, wedding? The, the, the scene with uh, with Wilf. Oh, uh, yeah. So Donna's happily married. The doctor's there watching from the sidelines as Sylvia and Wilf knows and they go talk. And he has a wedding gift for Donna. And in, in fairness, Sylvia's actually nice to him this time. Oh, by the way, uh, Joshua Naismith got arrested along with his daughter. Which is like, What? Well, they what, did. What? They did nearly put the universe in jeopardy. I, I mean, I, I mean, to, can we really blame them for that? In the well, they, yes, I guess, but like, yes, no, we can. Nobody else knew about that shit. No, but don't mess with technology that you have nothing. You know nothing about. Like, I don't know what they got arrested for exactly. Not that I'm against capitalists getting account accountability. Oh, they got put in the hole. Let's be honest. But either way, okay, but. Here's the doctor's wedding gift for Donna. And he says, I went back in time and I borrowed a quid from a nice man. Jeffrey Noble, his name was. Yeah, have that on me, he said. And, and uh, Sylvie's in tears because um, we see him in The Runaway Bride. And the actor actually like passed away in between Runaway Bride and Partners in Crime. Yeah, and that's why Wilf was created. He wasn't. He wasn't created. He was. He wasn't. No, he wasn't in. No, no. Wilf was in Voyage of the Damned. Yeah. Okay. That's why Wilf was introduced to Voyage of the Damned as a replacement for um, Jeffrey Noble. Right. And so with that, with that uh, quid, he bought a lottery ticket, which Donna thinks is a cheap one. And he's like, "Well, still, there's a big jackpot." And it's like, "Oh, hey, financial stability." I guess if we have to live in a capitalist hellscape, that's a good gift. So it's implied that she's going to win a huge amount of money. Yeah. Because, Which you know, he can time I, travel. I wonder I wonder if we'll see that in 2023. Maybe. And one, and we get the send up, the last time that Bernard Cribbins showed up in Doctor Who. And salutes the Doctor. A salute, a tearful salute. And as I say, I bawled my eyes out. Yeah. And one last visit. Well, it, it couldn't be a David Tennant retrospective without, without meeting Rose. Going back time. to where it all began. 2005, the Powell Estate. Yeah, he actually meets Rose before he meets up with Rose the first time. Yeah, because it's, e it's New Year's Day, 2005. And, you know, it's just turned midnight and he watching her he groans in pain for the regeneration she sees him there and you know they talk and he's like it's uh, what year is it oh it's 2005 new year's day 2005 i think you're gonna have a great year yeah they, they get her back for one cameo and they sort of de-age her a little bit with makeup and she's got like, a bubble hat on because it's january and the uh, last then, thing we see uh, on the go on the farewell tour is it sigma as the doctor is in pain, really feeling those regeneration ouchies. And also, going back to the doctor, we should mention, they uh, actually did retcon. He didn't just go back and visit all the RTD era companions. He visited fucking everybody. Yeah. So, you know, he went to see Joe. He went to see Perry. He went to see Ace. He went to see fucking Ben and Polly. Who knows? Maybe, but we don't see it for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, so Ood Sigma is going to help him along and sing a song to ease him his pain and he says, This song is ending, but the story never ends. Until twenty twenty three when the tribute band pops up and plays this fucking song again. Wait, oh sorry. my god, really? <laughs> <laughs> and so the doctor goes into the TARDIS, he starts to glow, and David Tennant's last line I don't wanna go. 
And as it turns out, he didn't fucking have to go. Sorry. sorry. Rainy he regenerates. He regenerates. Kaboom. Kaboom. Yeah, very violent regeneration. He blows up part of the tower. There's this fire. Because he doesn't want to go. And, I guess he's fighting. And it. compared to this funeral, funereal tone of, oh my god, David Tennant is going away. I don't want to go, but I gotta go. And then, kaboom! Hey, it's me. It's Bowtie Man. Holy shit. Holy fuck. Wow. Can Whoop! I just give you the uh, what the transcript says about David Tennant's regeneration into Matt Smith? Oh, wow. This is brilliant. The Golden Age regenerates David Tennant and starts with lots of fires in the TARDIS. He turns into a gangly, hyperactive drink of water with a long fringe of hair dangling over one eye. <laughs> That's Matt Smith, all well, right. Well, I suppose at least Matt Smith does look slightly alien. <laughs> oh, you got to love him. Yep. Well, and so he's and here. So... The regular man is, is here. Hey, Krista, it's your doctor. He's, he's, still got, he's still got legs. He's still got arms, hands. He, he just basically goes over all the pots of his anatomy, pulls his hair down, I'm a girl. No, I'm not a girl. And still not ginger. And something else, something important. I'm, 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 uh, and there's a loud bang. Ha! I'm crashing! <laughs> and then he yells Geronimo, and that's it for the Tenet era. Yeah. And that's it for the end of time. So what did you think? Uh, well, I think I'm going to be more favourable to this than you are. Because David Tennant, is he my doctor? He's one of my doctors. I would, I would say. And I think this is a really good send-off for him in general. I think the whole self-indulgent farewell tour could have been cut down significantly. In fact, I think the whole episode, the, the whole story could have been cut down significantly. It's 2 hours and 15 minutes. You could have easily cut this into two, into, into two one-hour chunks. Easily. I mean, it's not hard to lose 15 minutes off of this. Honestly. Maybe even 50-minute chunks, but I get it. We're going to go out with a bang, literally. Send off to David Tennant. I understand that. Acting for out, superb. David Tennant, John Sim, and of course, the late Bernard Cribbins. Timothy Dalton is fantastic as Rassilon as well. Yeah, it's it's self-indulgent. It's not as good as I remember it being, but I still like it. I'm that's sorry, the, I still that, like it. That's the real trick of, you know, the, the memory cheats, you know? It's not as good as you remember it. And that's what you're doing when you're trying to re recapture the glory of the past and remember 2008 when the show was good. Because you're not remembering the material of reality. You're remembering the warm, fuzzy feeling. As for my thoughts, David Tennant leaves at the end, so I like it. <laughs> no, no, no. God I, damn it. I had to. I had to. No. no. It, is, it is a good set episode. It's good. You know, I don't hate it. I really don't. For all I'm down on David Tennant, I'm like, his era was fine. It's just, you know, the modern insistence of, like, only remembering it that's, that annoys me. And it's interesting to go back and see how they tried to wrap it up the first time. It's got poignant moments. It's got goofy moments. It's got good acting all around. It tries to wrap up the Russell T. Davies era in a somewhat satisfying bow. And I think it succeeds at that for the most part. God only knows what they're going to do in bringing him back and bringing RTD back, considering the fucking nostalgia pandering mess we've gotten into, but that doesn't necessarily lie at the feet of these two episodes. So, it's an enjoyable two-hour, 15-minute one. It could be cut down, yes. It's self-indulgent, yes, but you know. Oh, it's good. It's good. Nah, I don't hate it. <laughs> and also David Tennant regenerates at the end of it, so God tier. But anyway, what are we doing next? Well, it's my turn next week. And we I figured we'd keep the energy going, because I, I could have gone for, um, you know, the end of time was, was like really gonzo, wacky idea with lots of overacting. So I could have done more of that or go the traditional route. Nah, to hell with that. We're going gonzo. Yes. Next yes. time, next time on Doctor Who, okay, guy from that sickos cartoon. Uh, next time on Doctor Who reviews, Tom Baker stars in the Horns of Nymon. Oh my God! 
It's Greek mythology. It has a maniac in it. How could I not? Oh, you are not ready. You, you want to talk about overacting? You are not ready. I think I am. <laughs> I've just sat through John Sim literally chewing the scenery. Oh, John Sim is nothing compared to Graham fucking crowd. I know, and it's glorious. <laughs> My dreams of conquest! He could have been the doctor. <laughs> he could have been. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh lord. Imagine he'd been the oh, doctor instead of Tom Baker. My god. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be fun. I thought you'd, I thought you'd approve. I mean, yeah. I, I, I love that you're embracing the conquest. Okay. Well. So we're going to do that next time and have a laugh and lark. But uh, where can you find us lovely people? You can find us on Twitter at Reviews Doctor. Individually we are at Reddit the Maniac, at Freezing Inferno, Kachiri's at the Kachiri, and Cats at Concave Usurper. We all stream on twitch.tv forward slash Freezing Inferno slash Radiat slash the Kachiri and slash Concave Usurper respectively. I should get back at that one day. I mean, I've been doing a lot of stuff lately. But, uh, I mean, are you getting back at it? Is there any Fall Guys? I keep having ideas falling? and then they keep falling through. Eh, falling through Fall Guys. I but I, I will I will get into it again uh, sometime. Also, you know, hey, uh, buy The Towers of the Trees by Sean Dillon and Back to the Eleventh Hour, Volumes 1 and 2 by Chris McTeer. Available now on Amazon.com. And also read A Quantum Microcosm Adrift in a Sea of History on my blog at francoserafingrants.blogspot.com. Link in the description below. Thank you. I'm midway through season three, and it's absolutely buck fucking wild. Yes, well, I, I say yes. I haven't seen it, but uh, there there are some things. Uh, there are some things. Uh, Mike and I are having a good time yelling about it in DM. Speaking of Mike, I want to I give him a little bit of a shout out here because he uh, apparently he clips our podcast sometimes. Oh, this clip. And he, ah! sent, he sent me a clip of our uh, Spyfall Part 2 um, review, <laughs> where apparently I said the worst thing about Star Wars of all time. You said The Last Jedi was good? Uh, well, when, when was Spyfall? No, I said The Rise of Skywalker was good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think at first I said I enjoyed seeing it. It wasn't the, the best film in the world, but it wasn't the worst Star Wars film ever. Ah, can I can I retract that opinion? No, I mean, oh, God. Depending on your point of view, it's either Phantom Menace, um, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, or Rise of Skywalker. I mean, Attack of the Clones is pretty infamous too. I don't think I said it was worst film though, because it's. It's just sort of there. Well, yeah, Rise of Skywalker. Apart from I hate sand. I hate sand is ridiculous. You, you, you know how I've just been bitching about nostalgia pandering. How the hell do you think I feel about Rise of Skywalker? I mean, so what opinions you regret in two years' time? I wish I hadn't said that. Yeah. Then again, look at what I said about Orphan 55. Don't clear <laughs> that, Mike! <laughs> now you've said that, he hey. will. Quick, before he does, say goodnight, Rainiac. Good night, Rainier. And uh, we'll see you next time for the Horns of Nymon and a crazy Graham Crowden. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, you, you haven't seen it. If you thought John Sim was goofy in this, you've seen nothing yet. God, your, uh, your love for Greek mythology means that one day we're going to have to cover Underworld and God help us. Is that also Greek mythology? Yeah, kind of. Ah, crap. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>